scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. The scruffy-haired little boy Is that the phasmid? It looks like the phasmid, leaning against the wall. Wait, what if this is the fishing rod situation all over again? It's not the phasmid. It's not even organic. It's a fire iron. How disappointing. Right? You'll have better luck next time, though. The phasmid, finding it is your destiny. A few locusts trudge along the wall of the trap. The rest are piled in a heap in the corner, dead. No phasmid anywhere. Poor things. The trap is filled with dead and dying locusts. Most of them aren't moving anymore. You still can't see a phasmid anywhere. Poor thing. A row of ghostly shades facing the crumbling wall. With another seven shades standing, a cold sea wind blows away the figures. Behind this building, the other one, once filled with engineers and designers of felled electric, now collapsed and dead, but for some rats. You feel drawn, for some reason, to the faded mural again. As you approach, the man turns and greets you with a polite wave. He appears completely at ease, like a common holiday maker. Ah, super. It's the officer. I was not expecting to run into you again, but things have a funny way of turning out, no? What brings you down to the scenic Martinez coast? Hmm. Well, that's Tresin. I was visiting the fishing village just north of here. They have applied for a series of microloans to revitalize the old market. And well, I wished to see the situation firsthand. And then, well, I had some extra time on my hands, so I decided to stroll down here. It's quite peaceful, isn't it? Really? Here? How can you be sure? Ah, 
Is that what those pockmarks are? I might have guessed. Fascinating how much history is contained right here, if only one knows where to look for it. Are you just going to let him get away with these generalities and euphemisms? Yes, the loss of human life was truly catastrophic. This is why the Coalition is so focused on preventing another war. Our peacekeeping mission is a testament to this. Thankfully, the region is becoming more and more stable. I'm confident that atrocities like this belong in the past. The future is... Tranquilo below. Tranquilo below? Let's not get into this. You can't argue with someone who uses words like tranquilo below. Ah bon? I'm all ears, officer. My friend, if it's la responsabilité you're after, I have good news for you. There's no need to form such a committee because it already exists. Good. Of course it does. These moral intern types. The Comité de Responsabilité de Revachol, it acts as a sort of clearing house for coalition activities. To put it simply, they are the ultimate arbiters of la responsabilité in this part of the world. Yes, this is just the sort of reasonable authority you're looking for. I would offer to connect you with the committee myself, but alas, I am not actually in Martinez. What? Where is he then? You knew there was something strange about this one. He's an astral projection. A bureaucratic phantasm. He's speaking figuratively. He means he's not in Martinez in his official capacity. Of course, we are speaking informally, but officially I am still in La Delta, preparing for an upcoming conference on fuel oil derivatives. That's why it would be extremely irregular, or potentially even Inappropriate for me to intercede with the committee concerning a district I'm not officially in. Yes, you've made your persistence quite clear. Under normal circumstances, I would have to insist you go through the regular channels. No, no. You can't let them give you the runaround. But if you have information of a vital interest, they might be willing to entertain an exception. In which case, I would advise you to contact them via Coalition Warship Archer. You see, in addition to being an airborne artillery platform, Coalition Warship Archer is also the linchpin of the Coalition's surveillance and communications infrastructure in Revachol. And listening! It has the most objective vantage point in the entire city. Not to mention a vast array of radio, photographic and meteorological monitoring instruments. I find it a great comfort to know there are benevolent powers watching over all, in strict accordance with the Wayfarer Act and the bristol Muna Convention. Hmm, this is quite the problem. Very tricky. Of course, the Archer has orders to fire on any unidentified aerostatics that might approach it, so it might be safer to get in touch from the ground. But in that case, you would require a radio transmitter capable of broadcasting on coalition frequencies. And that kind of technology naturally isn't typically available for non-coalition use. Yes, it is a bit of a conundrum. I suppose there might be some way to circuit bend your way onto those frequencies, but you'd have to be one of those techno tinkerers to do it. Unfortunately not, no. I don't have the pleasure. I am merely a representative of the coalition government, not very well versed in technology. But you... Perhaps your young friends in the tent might be of assistance? Let me just say that I have complete confidence in the RCF. I'm sure you'll figure something out. Always my pleasure to be of assistance to the RCF. Godspeed, and if we don't meet again, bonne chance.
And Mikael noticed the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tran Heilostam. You must be Kim Kitsuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Nice to meet you. Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. He's just making up fancy words. This doesn't mean anything. Oh yes, so Mikhail. They had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into verbs lately. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor, or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. No, I'm afraid I can't help you with this one, officer. It's just a regular day off for me and Mikhail here. So you haven't seen anyone around? No, I'm sorry. As I said, this is just a day off. We just arrived anyway. There's something friendly and familiar in how he says that. A day off. Aha! But it's not just any empty old building. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn-of-the-century cybernetics boom. Hold on. What's R&D? It looks old and weathered with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. Apologies, it's an acronym for research and development. <laughs> they don't use it anymore. You're probably more familiar with RTD, Research and Technological Development. Mayor Kalpa, you are not familiar with that one either. This man is a bookhead. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, they were developing an ace up their sleeve? I'm mixing my metaphors here. It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. Which is a feat of engineering, even today's giants, Rehm, ICN and ZAM haven't achieved yet. He assumes something like a combat stance, facing the wind. Indeed. What? The revolution! Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building or one of the adjacent ruins. All of this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Felt 
build this side of town for R&D. Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before it felt arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... He means that the boys got shot by the communists. The boys were bourgeois. Tape computers. They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. A short-lived legislative foundation for a short-lived utopia. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to River Shawl on her political concept album, Bon Bessier d'un Solint. You should read it. Every local library in River Shawl stocks a copy of the decree. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. The kid takes a peek at the green and silver worm on the cover of the book already forgetting about this part of the discussion. Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien-looking, turn-of-the-century hardware. Buckle up. Ten years ago, I did a little... freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womty Domty Dom Center in Vredeport, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ackerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... Wait, did he just say Wompty Dompty Dom Center? He did it. He said Wompty Dompty Dom Center, like it's the most natural thing in the world. What the hell is a Wompty Dompty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Joost? This is all ninzy pinzy garbage for sissy people. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center for Contemporary Art. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ackerman, chose to... <coughs> in fact, I'm not. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredeport, and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <coughs> But perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Made of black film and folding tape structures. Even one would be very useful. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to the precious device. So they did. The felt playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources report it as the felt playback experience, but those are incorrect. Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. But of course, <laughs> what else? I do have some money, yes, but that's not what's really important here. No, I mean, come on, you need the money. If it's not a thing, 
he can give you some. Of course, Detective. I wouldn't have assumed anything else. Matter of fact, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the Vespertine Department of Justice has published a rather interesting paper on the criminal profiling in former socialist states. Have you read it? If not, then you definitely shit. If not for tips and tricks, then just for theoretical curiosity. Anyway, that's just a little something that sprang to mind. You were saying? Forget it. They don't sell those kind of books at crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikael here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Pick your brain? If anything, this was rather one-sided. He did the talking. Whatever. I see you're here again, offside man. Did I mention getting us into the church would help? This young speed freak seems to know a lot about signs. Could he be the techno tinkerer you're looking for? His look is intensely suspicious. A sticker? You mean the yellow one? Can you describe it to me? Interesting. He wants you to describe it though he already knows what it looks like. So I can hear you do it. Sometimes the outside gaze helps us reflect on things. Lloyd, don't bother our guests with your games. Piss off, Andre. Me and Mr. Cop are trying to discuss art. You shouldn't talk like that. Cool. The ban on foulness. That's the moralist plot to alienate us from our bodily functions so they can control us more fully. Anyhow, what was the sticker like? Good, good. What did you want to know? Yes, you're the 23rd person to get it right. And I've asked 23 people. Looks like it's a dead guy smiling to the entire human race. Really? We're all the same. Same eyes, same smiles, same death. He defeated history. We are living in the age of history, and in the eyes of history, we are always already dead. How can we ever smile then? Because history is a lie, and so are its deaths. The present moment and life are the hardcore. The hardcore expels death. Or maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just really ecstatic about the beats. Or drugged out of his mind, come to think of it. Or drunk, or in a clinical coma, all glad to be dead. But those versions suck. Simplicity was brought to us by a classical solarist modernism. The 
that was a tasteful, harmonious simplicity, right? Well, hardcore is not tasteful or outwardly harmonious. It's a warning shot. This will be dangerous. The echo of man's loss haunting him. The sticker, the clothes, the music, same thing. Not alone. Many people are thinking the same thing right now. We all see the same smiling dead guy in a couple of X's and a circle. And a curve. The beat is the same for all. I guess one could write an entire treatise on the thing. But what for? Nah. Hmm. Still strongly out of sync. Stage gamma disalignment. You heard me. Don't think so. Big bad frequencies are extremely negative. Thought suppression, dream implantation, memory revision, pretty out there stuff. Not sure I want to get involved with it. There is fear there, but also curiosity. He just needs a reason to help you. Besides, our own signs aren't even synced yet. So how am I supposed to get you synced up with a big bed? Don't make any sense, law lover. The large-headed youth has closed his eyes, lost in the music. Sensing you, he opens them. Incremental progress! Yeah! Hi again. So, uh, how things going? As always, we'll be right here, waiting patiently for the news. Yeah! Hello again. Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon, I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? Oh, that's good to know, I guess. Why is it in the sea? Hmm, an installation. Us poor people are stupid and don't get installations. All I see is a heap of trash. This actually calls for a funeral, I think. Aye. Feels deserved, don't you think? Falling in the line of duty like that and all? And why so? Our things are part of our life world. They're made with human sweat and they share human history. We should care about them as we care about humans. To some extent, at least. Life world? Someone's been reading up on last century Gottwaldian philosophers. Play it cool now. Oh yeah. <laughs> you won't even be able to get it out of the water before early June. And where are you gonna bury it? Who to invite? What music to play at the wake? Take it from someone who's been through a few funerals. It's easiest to just leave them there and let nature take care of it. That's all we have time for right now anyway. Come back here in June and see how you feel about it then. It's not like it's going anywhere. Yes, that is a pity. But for now, let's focus on the things we do get to do. 
Like the murder investigation, for example? You like the coup brief, you look like that. Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon, I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? Do you think she really needs more of that after a man died at sea? What if I told you it is actually possible to go on a date sober? Before recorded history, men and women were able to do simple, very primitive things together sober. Acknowledge the situation and keep it basic. I have, and I don't really. You just want to go for a walk. What kind of a monster doesn't want to go for a walk? Walks are innocent. Just a walk? I don't know, officer. I would not have taken you for an innocent perambulator. Where would this walk take us, officer? Nothing creepy, strange, or out there. Keep it airy and simple. Officer, I thought we had a walk of our own in mind. One that results in a solved murder investigation. Oh no. You, come with us. Seriously, I insist. You need to understand that nothing is going to happen. We're just walking. That's it. Understood? Having the lieutenant along is a fail-safe measure against any possible funny business. Let's call it a walk. I'll join you if the ma'am insists. I do, yes. Stroll on the beach sounds nice, doesn't it? All right, I'll see the kids haven't killed each other and we'll meet at Land's End in... 15 minutes? She doesn't wait for an answer. You better get ready. <laughs> 